Welcome to the Name Game. Workout number 129 is Ascent. Four time with a 20 minute cap, 9, 15, 21, with bar facing burpee, deadlift at 195, 125, and box jump over at 24, 20 inches. Immediately into 6, 9, 12 of bench press at 195, 125, deadlift at 335, 215, and box jump over at 40 slash 33 inches. What's your strategy, Riley? Um, I'm gonna go pretty conservative on the first part. Let's see what I can do with the second part. But. Any break strategy on part two? Uh, I feel like that'll go by feel. Same with the first part, or just kind of take it slow? Um, I mean, I want to take the first part slower so that I can avoid my back going up, but... Cool, good luck. Thanks. <laughs> 21 burpees sucks in general. Three, two, one, go. And we're off. Ascent. Uh, so obviously this is named this because it's an ascending rep scheme. And usually we see descending rep schemes, uh, especially in training where like the goal is to keep the power output pretty high. But this is in reverse. And um, yeah, Riley kind of mentioned that because it's that way and that a lot of the, the second half of this, the, the 9, 6, 12 is at like really tough movements at like heavier loadings and a high, high box. So you just got to be really careful about how you, you start off uh, pacing wise. So Day, how would you think about trying to like manage your output in this first part? It's, um, I know it's kind of like the 21, 15, 9 or the inverse of that, right? Which is what's happening here. It's it's a tr like kind of a trap. Those nine is it's gonna be it's gonna feel good. Like nine deadlifts at 125 is not an issue. Like box jump overs at that not an issue. Bar facing burpees are gonna feel great, right? But then once that fatigue accumulates after those box jump overs and going into 15, that's where I see it people falling off. Um, so. With those nine of the deadlifts, you can do it unbroken. I don't see an issue with that um, in that first round. But if you want to take a more conservative approach and preserve that grip, because there's going to be more deadlifts on that second part. Um, yep. Luckily, the rest of this workout isn't grippy, so it's really like your only grip there. So, But just like bar facing burpees and then box jump over are just high fatigue movements, right? They'll spike that heart rate, so... I think those are the ones that are going to be like the trap versus the deadlift. Yeah. And the, the tough thing about this is like there, it's not like rowing or running or like air bike where it's like a cyclical movement where you can really control your output. Like the only way to like slow these down without, like if you slow down a deadlift that's at the same loading, it, it, it almost makes it harder rather than easier. So like right. the goal isn't really to slow it down. It's, and, and so like your option is to either break and stop completely or just keep moving through the reps and these are pretty easy reps so it's hard to like mentally to want to like break them a lot in this first part until you actually get tired where you're like oh i feel like i should break now um so yeah and that was something that riley and i had kind of talked about afterwards i don't really have a, a great solution for that it's almost like in the round of nine just kind of like you're gonna feel good so just kind of use it and then maybe in the round of 15 just start breaking it even though you're gonna feel fresh still Right, and I think that's, like you mentioned, with like the monostructural movements like bikes or if you're wearing a heart rate monitor when you run, like you usually know what cadence to go at, right? Mm. You, you know what wattage output is good for a sustainable, like long time domain or something like that. So you can definitely pace it. Like that's what we do when we're doing any Metcon, right? You kind of just stare at the screen and be like, okay, that's the, that's the RPMs I want to stay at. But when you're doing burpees and all that, it's just like... You, just, you can't really, you don't have that gauge. So it's um, focusing a lot on the breathing and knowing what strategy works for you when it comes to this. Because there are some strategies that work better for others versus like 
the breathing, the pacing and all that. So just being familiar with that is going to be the helpful part of it. Yeah. And maybe that like, again, we got a 20 minute cap and it's like for a lot of people, you're going to be working up to the cap, right? Where mm -hmm. I would say majority of people are probably going to get capped on this workout. Um, so like knowing that it's like, oh, think of this more as like a 20 minute and rep than a, you know, 21, 15, nine. Right. So if mm -hmm. you think about it more in that like mental framework, it's like, you know, it really doesn't matter if I break this bar at the set of nine or the set of 15, like provided I keep my heart rate nice and low. Like that's really what matters is that I don't go crazy. And provided that I don't do that, then everything else doesn't really matter as much in terms of like how you actually break it. Cause it is just such a long piece. Right. Yeah, I mean, you can even tell, like, Riley's breathing pretty hard here. I mean, she is almost five minutes in already, and it's like, just, again, it's like, you want to just get through that first piece so that you can actually get to the second piece where you do want to rest, but yeah, it's got to kind of, like, yeah, ride the line a little bit. And 21 burpees sucks in general, and this is after doing the first two rounds. So just, like, all that just accumulated is not fun so just being really smart with that strategy and you could tell when she was doing it she was like her burpees like looked more methodical they, yeah. they she wasn't like sprinting burpees like she yeah. when she was falling to the floor like she was like breathing like you tell there was a little bit more thought into that versus yeah. just blend yep and i think that i think that was her trying to kind of like pull back the intensity of it and just like you could try to like monitor the heart rate a little bit and not let it get out of control um because she's she's i mean there's some fatigue but it's not like it's like a max effort it's it's more so the fact that like there's the the daunting second half of this workout where it's like yeah. at some point everybody's going to transition over to that and when you do that it's it's like way like the demands of that are way higher like you can't have a 180 beats per minute heart rate and just like blaze through that second part like you're gonna have to be forced to stop and rest so yeah i feel like we're talking circles a little bit but like basically like the, the takeaway is like you have to figure out a way to to get through that part with the least amount of total fatigue going into the second part that you can So let's look to the second part because she's about to finish up here. Um, starts with the bench press at 125 for ladies, 195 for the guys. Obviously, it's going to be a bit by feel because you are like, you know, probably seven to ten minutes into the workout at this point. But how might you think about breaking that up? I think because they're like the first part was more just fatigue on the lower body and all that. So bench press, like, you probably feel pretty fresh there. Um, with If you have a good bench, like, you go through those six perfectly fine. Um, definitely no issue with breaking that up. Um, the nine is where I'd probably break it up, where, like, descending sets, maybe, like, you do, like, a five, three, one. You could do four, three, two, something of that sort. Um, but I don't think that's going to be for most people, that probably wouldn't be the trickiest part of it. It's mostly going to be those deadlifts um, at yeah. that higher weight, right? The deadlift into the box jump is definitely a tricky combo. And it's like either oh. have, in my mind, at least it's sort of like you either have the bench press or you don't. Like if you're yeah. strong, it's like the bench press is almost a break. Like it's not a break from like the upper body, but like you don't use your upper body. Like you're not going to need your triceps and your chest for box jump overs and deadlifts. So that's really it like that combo is the tough combo. And then the bench press it's sort of just what it is what it is and you can almost use it as a at least break for like the lower body at least right do you like deadlifting with a belt in workouts i do yeah i'm i'm a belter when it comes to the when deadlifts I, I feel like i'm weird like i only really like using a belt for squatting like i don't oh. use it for like deadlifts like i will deadlift to a max without a belt but above like 85 percent in squats I'm like i kind of want my belt <laughs> just saying no i i think i i'd rather deadlift with a belt versus squatting with a belt i still yeah. use them for both but like 
Definitely deadlifts. That's the way most people are. I'm just weird. So the way Riley set this up was that she put, well, I, I kind of helped her with this, but uh, we set up three bumper plates. That's a three inch bumper plate underneath the 30 inch box to get to the 33 inch height for females. Um, and it's, it does wobble a little bit, but I wasn't worried that I was going to like fall over on her. Um, I would warm this up. And if you're someone who can do this RX, just do it. Um, like the idea is that it is super challenging and it's probably going to be a little bit sketchy, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a higher box jump or something along those lines or like a higher clear over or something um, in qualifiers and quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. so, um, and then for the guys, if you have 220 stacked on top of each other, just band them together so that they're not sliding when you jump on top. It's really easy to get your heels caught on the edge of the box and then it like push forward and you don't want that to happen. <laughs> it's not going to be a good day. Yeah, doing these high box jumps right after the deadlifts is probably not fun. No. It's like you kind of have to hold your breath when you're doing them a little bit too. It's like you, you really have to gear up for it. And it's like it can zap your legs, but it's also like that trunk flexion. Like you're pulling your knees all the way up to your chest in that high up yeah. a, a box jump. Forget what she does on the second set of bench press if she breaks it or not. How is her bench press? I think she's right around 200. Okay, so she. So this is a good like rest for her in the. Yeah. In this part. Yeah, and she's smart with how she did it. Like you mentioned with the deadlift, she's not going slow. She's kind of using the balance from her chest. Yeah, and that, I feel like that just kind of happens naturally. Like if you right. if you can bench fast, you tend to bench fast. And like when they get grindy, they do. And there's not a whole lot you can do about it besides just like resting. And at that right. Point, it's like you just kind of want to get through it. So, yeah. Sort of like handstand push-ups. Like you, you try not to make them grindy. And if you realize that you did one grindy, you just kind of have to stop. But like... Hopefully you don't do that until like the last round yeah. of whatever it is. It's like, okay, then it's fine to, to get away with that. But if you're, if you're trying to hold off doing that as long as possible. I don't remember what Riley said, but it, the way she's resting, it kind of looks like her back's blowing up, which makes sense, but... I would definitely imagine people are going to deal with, like, I feel like the, the deep hip flexion combined with, like, heavy hinging can mm -hmm. get, a lot, get a lot of people's low back, especially when you're breathing hard, which obviously she is at this point. Nobody will be. It's a rough combo. Would that box setup sketch you out? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, she's a good athlete, so it's like I, I would trust her in doing it. But like any normal person, I'd be like, absolutely not. <laughs> it's tough because like, I don't know what they're gonna do. Like, I'd love to see like, like a quarterfinals test, like a, a higher box jump or something along those lines. But it's just like, unless like you do something like this, it's like 20, 20, 20 24, 30. It's yeah. Like, okay, most people have multiple of those, so you could stack two of them together and make 40 inches, but they're not going to probably have the females do that realistically, unless it was like a box get over and they use like 48 for males, which that yeah. one's a very different movement if you can use your hands. But, uh, so it is sketchy, I'm not going to lie. But, uh, at the same time, it's, I don't know. I, I have my athletes do like plyometric style, like higher boxes and stuff quite a bit, so. Yeah. Hopefully they're at least a little bit comfortable jumping onto a high box. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you also be like comfortable jumping that height, just like that high power output under that fatigue. Like you have to be comfortable that you can, that you have a good box. Like your vertical jump or whatever is pretty good. 
Because if, like, you're just barely getting 36, like, this workout, like, you're going to have to go on, like, drop it down to 30. If, like, normally you can't even do it when you're fresh. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you're warming up and you, you're you too sketched out to even do a rep or two. Yeah. I mean, and I think, honestly, that's probably going to be, like, how most people have to scale something like that. It's just, like, they're mentally, it's like a mental block. They're, like, I, they go to jump on and they, like, dip down and, like, nope, can't, can't, yeah. don't feel up for that. Um, the other thing that was kind of interesting with when she was jumping over, it's like when you cash that low, like ideally in like a, a box jump over, like she did in the first uh, round of things, like the 9, 15, 21, it, it's like you land on sort of the far side of the box and that way it, it makes getting off the box a whole lot easier. Whereas mm-hmm. like when it's that high, it's like you land on the very edge of the box. You're almost like using your feet to like hit the corner that, and then you can kind of like use that to get up. And that way, if you trip, it's like not a big deal. Mm-hmm. And then, but then she has to like either like stand up, get over, or like she does this little like duck walk to get across the top of the box. So mm-hmm. that's another thing people are gonna have to think about is like maybe don't even think about, but like at least practice is like when I get up there, I'm gonna be on the very edge. How do I get across the thing without standing up the entire way? Because obviously, you don't want to stand up. Yeah. So she broke that last set of bench press. Shout out to the ladies. I made it, the weights even for you guys and made it odd for the guys. I feel like the ladies are always getting screwed from CrossFit HQ in terms of like they get weird weights and the guys get like normal weights. Like, yeah. Like what? what is it? Like they always use like 315, like 205. And it's like, why not use like 215? Like give them an even number. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, why does it have to be 205? Like, you should never have to break out a five pound plate. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're li- like lifting to a max or something. So I was like, you know what? I'll let the ladies have the even numbers and the guys yeah. will, will do something weird. So the you guys have the, the 195, 335. So it's a little bit off, but. You kind. Very thoughtful. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> In the words of Chris, I'm a man of the people. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Cool. Finishing out the deadlifts. And this last set of box jump overs actually goes really well for her. Um... I think it was just like a matter of like at that point you're kind of through that last bar and it's sort of like that sprint mentality to finish it out. But yeah. I mean, overall, I was pretty pleased with how she paced this one. That's the other thing is like when you're in a workout like this, like I feel like I'm just making excuses for myself at this point, but like I just feel like I can breathe so much better if I'm not wearing a belt. You think like so? Yeah, I mean she's like undoing it each time and kind of like taking a break and letting herself breathe, but like I don't know. It does. It does like like when you're trying to breathe and it's like kind of snug. I yeah. do see that, like especially in a workout like this where you're just like breathing heavy the whole time. I feel like half the time if I go to deadlift and I'm like wearing like a, a belt and it's like super heavy where it like starts to like crunch me a little bit, like it feels like I'm gonna puke because it's like digging into my my ribs. Yeah, right. It like digs right here. Yeah, like I can brace as hard as I want if I'm pulling a max deadlift. Like it's I'm gonna get crunched a little bit. You can see this duck walk here across the top of the box. Which the other thing, if you can get like that, the second step, right on the like she she can see she puts like the her toe over the lip of the box, that allows you to kind of uh, it, like your your toe won't get stuck on the box if you do that. Versus if you kind of take two normal steps, it'll it'll get caught. Like if anybody's ever like hopped off the back of like a tailgate of a truck or something, like it's a lot easier to get out if you like put like your your toes over the 
over the lip and just let your, your feet kind of hang over the edge a little bit. Good job, Riley. How was hey. it? <laughs> it's not nice. The first part, like, got your heart rate and then, like, blew your back up. So then the second part, like, your heart rate really chilled out, but my back was so blown up that it was, like, hard to move through it. So, but it was fun. What well, the movements was the hardest? Honestly, I think the deadlifts. Like, maybe just because my back was already, like, a little bit tight beforehand, but. It just got really hard to pick it up towards the end. And then this was hard too, but yeah. the bench was the break. Were you happy with your execution? Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm happy with the first part. I felt like I kept my pace kind of where I wanted it. Just like pretty conservative, but like moving through it. But the second part, I mean, I wish my back wouldn't have blown up so much, but I feel like I did what I could, so. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty happy with it, just overall. Yeah. Nice job. Thanks. Alrighty folks, it's that time. Be sure to submit your scores to the leaderboard at zorfitness.com slash TNG. You're more than welcome to share this and take it on with some friends, and best of luck on the workout.